It was only in the course of the late 19th and 20th centuries that equality ensured that women were seen as equals with men in society. Especially during the Middle Ages, women were often the subject of marriages, whose primary role was to bear children and look after the household. In addition, there was a general unequal treatment, which was sometimes fueled by denominational churches and referred to the often invoked original sin of Eve in the Garden of Eden. But how bad was the position of women in the Middle Ages really? What things did they endure and how were they viewed? In this video, we go through some examples that should illustrate how bad it really was for women in the Middle Ages. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the most shocking stories regarding women in the Middle Ages. Perceptions of the Female Body In the Middle Ages, a woman's body was also a perception of her personality. If she smelled good and was well-groomed, she had to be a person of moral integrity. But if you weren't blessed with beauty, you couldn't be a good person either. Menstruation was seen as a form of sin in its own right, while women of status were simultaneously revered elsewhere as the source of life. But the biggest problem for many women was the dogma of the denominational Christian churches. Women were considered a danger to decent men, especially if they were beautiful and curvy. Their bodies have been called the thorn of sin per se. So, all in all, the female body was strong and intended for the birth of new life, but at the same time it was full of sin and a danger to humans. This is the contradiction that should be found in many parts of society in the Middle Ages. The Veil in the Middle Ages the debate about headgear for women has resurfaced in recent years, especially in connection with the headscarf and the burqa. The headscarf was already the subject of an intensive debate in the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages, it was perfectly normal for women in Western Europe to leave the house with a head covering. On the contrary, those who wore their hair down were quickly suspected of having questionable morals. It was also an unspoken obligation for married women to cover their heads. Fashion was often used for this, and unusual bonnets were normal, especially among aristocrats. So, it's by no means the case that the debate is entirely new. In the past, however, a large part of the question was whether the headscarf would simply show that women are inferior to men. Early Marriage Generally, girls and young women were primarily an object of commerce. This was not only true in the nobility, where liaisons were usually intended to create an alliance between houses and close ties between genders. Even among the common people, fathers mostly tried to get their daughters out of the house as early as possible because in the general opinion, they didn't contribute enough to the maintenance of the household and were therefore only an expensive mouth at the dinner table. It was therefore perfectly normal for women to be considered marriageable shortly after their first menstrual period, usually from the age of 14. Marriages were usually held around the age of 16, and if a woman wasn't married by the time she was 18, it aroused suspicions that something was wrong with her. For women, marriage usually meant the end of contact with their family and the establishment of a new family far away. What was life like for women in the Middle Ages? In the Middle Ages, women had specific roles in society. On the one hand, they were responsible for tidying up the household, and on the other hand, for bringing up the children. While nannies helped in the aristocratic areas, it was the case with the commoners that they had to perform all these tasks alongside their actual work. In particular, the task of taking care of the household should not be underestimated. As a rule, it was normal for a woman to do small jobs and take care of the food and shopping and cleanliness, a small parallel to modern times. 
But all of this happened in a context in which they had no rights. They were often the victims of domestic abuse, mugging, and rape, and were totally dependent on their husbands. They had no say in major decisions, and in some parts of the world, they weren't even allowed to pray with the rest of the family. Reading and Writing the question of whether women could read or write can be answered in the same way for men. It depended on the status. While the simple peasants and most of the citizens were denied access to education, it was actually normal for women in the nobility to have enjoyed a corresponding education. This was seen above all in practical terms. It was their job to run a household, and for that you had to be able to read and write. Education was also particularly important in the monastery, and many women found refuge there. All in all, it was less a question of gender than of what estate you were born into. The Position of Women there were also sometimes drastic differences in the status of women in society. In general, a married woman in the poor classes was totally dependent on her husband and unable to negotiate her own contracts or even make decisions on her own. Religiously, too, she was the subject of her husband's will. In the bourgeoisie, on the other hand, women could sometimes run their own businesses and be active in the marketplaces. This was actually not uncommon, since they often inherited their husbands' businesses when their husbands died. In the case of the nobility, female rulers were entirely possible, albeit more so in the late Middle Ages, with prominent examples such as Queen Elizabeth. All in all, however, the majority of the women were lacking their own rights and in complete dependence on their husbands, and often even at the mercy of harsher penalties from the law. Women had no rights. Apart from the rare examples of the bourgeoisie and nobility, it was relatively impossible for women to assert their own rights. This was not a phenomenon of the Middle Ages, but lasted until the late modern era, before the women's movement gradually managed to strengthen women's rights in society, including the right to vote. In the Middle Ages, however, there were no such movements. This was not least due to the fact that the very omnipresent denominational church strongly defined the role of women and ensured that they were not perceived as individuals, but above all, as a role to be filled. They were considered to be a mother and a wife, and not actually a human being who should decide her own destiny. Resistance to the idea of an independent woman who's not tied to a man was evident at the latest in the witch hunts of the late Middle Ages. Water Torture a good example of the sometimes unimaginable methods of torture used against women believed to be witches was water torture. It was a precursor to waterboarding, which has made headlines a lot in recent years for being used against enemy armies. Artificial drowning was simulated for the women. While the historical writings imply that the goal was by no means the death of the victim, it was not uncommon for women to be driven to the brink of death in order to confess to being a witch. As time went by, men and the denominational church developed increasingly cruel ways of getting women to simply confess to being a witch who had bewitched a man or spoiled the fruit of the field. Many of the methods of torture used on women were much more gruesome in their details than those designed for men because of fear of independent women. Disputes In the late Middle Ages, the idea of divorce came into society, fueled not least by kings who wanted to break away from their wives in order to remarry. Of course, women could not expect really fair treatment here either, and it was often only possible for the men to actually get a divorce if that was their will. When it comes to fairness, however, this is no comparison to the methods that were previously common in parts of Europe. For example, there was an open duel between two spouses to settle disputes or to divorce one another. In this physical duel, the two spouses attacked each other with weapons and were supposed to overwhelm the other side in a fight that, in case of doubt, was also a matter of life and death. It's not quite certain to what extent this barbaric custom actually took place in later years, but it should be clear that the women in these duels had virtually no chance against their men, who were usually clearly physically stronger. 
wives sued their husbands. One of the few ways a woman could get out of a marriage was to prove that the marriage was never consummated. In concrete terms, this meant that there was never any sexual intercourse between the two parties. This could be the case, for example, with male impotence, which was not uncommon in the Middle Ages. They had to seek a procedure before church courts, in which the alleged impotence of the man was to be proven or disproven with adventurous tests and examinations. Since the tests failed to provide any form of privacy for either man or woman, ending a marriage must have been a desperate last step. In the end, however, it was actually a way of escaping a marriage that, for a variety of reasons, was unbearable. Women's rights these days are vastly superior to what they were all those years ago. To put it plainly, women had no rights whatsoever, outside of what her husband wished for her. In most parts of the world, marriage was not designed to be between two people who loved each other. Rather, it was designed to be between two people who could further themselves financially, socially, or otherwise. The idea of loving one another only came many years later. What's incredibly interesting about this time period is that the denominational church is to blame for nearly all of the suffering women were forced to endure. As it would turn out, the Catholic Church was at the forefront of this ideology. In the Bible, women are told to remain silent during certain assemblies, often when a church program is going on. However, it seems as though many church leaders took this idea out of context and applied it to nearly every facet of daily life. In reality, the Bible never actually commands women to remain silent during daily activities or for them to simply deal with whatever a man dishes out. This is an important topic to cover, as it seems that many people are attempting to turn the Christian faith on its head. In reality, the Christian faith had very little to do with the harsh treatment of women. In the real world, it was greedy men who spun the teachings of the Bible to mean something that they were never intended to mean. One of the most obvious examples of this can be found in the book of Ephesians, in which men are commanded to love their wives. Various other books talk about men making endless sacrifices to keep their wives happy and satisfied. There's also an entire book written about how a healthy marriage should operate. While women are asked to remain submissive to their husbands, they're only asked to do so in the context of a man truly doing everything he can to make his wife happy. It's a two-way command that's often overlooked. It's not our intention for the end of this video to turn into a Bible lesson, but it seems like this was an important topic to cover, as many people tend to blame the church as a whole for forcing women to submit to men against their will, when in reality this isn't true at all. Denominational churches are the ones who began to spin this idea long after the Bible was written. Those who follow first century Christian belief systems, as is commanded in the Christian Bible, do not buy into these false ideas. It's truly heartbreaking that for so many years, men decided to use religion as a crutch to justify their own immoral deeds against women. For thousands of years, men concocted a false idea that women must essentially bow down to men, when that has never been a healthy thing to do. So many women were cast out of their homes, exiled from their cities, and were forced to suffer in incredible ways for no reason at all, aside from the pleasures of men. Thankfully, the tides seem to be turning these days, and women are allowed to find a lot more respect and dignity than they would have been allowed many years ago. These days, women are often seen leading multi-million dollar businesses, running various countries around the world, and the United States even had its first female presidential candidate back in 2016. It's safe to say that a lot of progress has been made within the last few decades, but this doesn't mean that there isn't much more work to do. We all know that both men and women were created equal, and it seems that the world may finally be waking up to this revelation. We hope that with this video, we were able to give you a deeper insight into the concerns of women in the Middle Ages. What other areas can you think of where women struggled in those times, and when do you think the shift in history started? Thank you for watching. Click on one of the pictures and watch another exciting video. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up, and to never miss new videos again, click subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.